Here's a list of amino acids and their important derivatives. Phenylalanine and its derivative tyrosine are precursors to the catecholamines, which include dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. Thyroid hormones are also derived from tyrosine, and the pigment melanin is derived from dopa. Tryptophan uses vitamin B6 to make niacin, or vitamin B3, which is the precursor to electron carriers NAD and NADP, using the cofactor tetrahydrobiopterin, which is used to transfer a hydroxyl group to a substrate. Tryptophan can also be converted to serotonin, which in turn can be converted to melatonin, which is important for sleep. This is why people associate eating turkey on Thanksgiving with being tired after the meal, since turkeys have lots of tryptophan. B6 is also used in the conversion of histidine to histamine, which is important for the allergic response. A third use of B6 is in the first step of conversion of glycine to porphyrin. Glycine is combined with succinyl coenzyme A by the enzyme delta aminolevulonic acid synthase to make delta aminolevulonic acid, which is the rate-limiting step of heme synthesis. This is why B6 deficiency can cause sideroblastic anemia. Arginine can be used to make creatine, urea, and nitric oxide. And lastly, glutamate can be used to make the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA, which also uses B6, and can make glutathione, which is an antioxidant. The catecholamines are the hormones derived from phenylalanine, which include dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. The first step in catecholamine synthesis is the conversion from phenylalanine to tyrosine via the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. This step requires tetrahydrobiopterin as a cofactor, which reduces it to dihydrobiopterin. Dihydrobiopterin reductase then uses NADPH to restore tetrahydrobiopterin. The second step converts tyrosine to dihydroxyphenylalanine, or DOPA, which requires the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase, and again uses tetrahydrobiopterin as a cofactor. In the third step, DOPA is converted to dopamine, which requires B6 and DOPA decarboxylase. This is the step that's inhibited by carbidopa to treat Parkinson's disease. Since Parkinson's is caused by having too little dopamine, do you remember why a drug that inhibits dopamine synthesis actually helps patients with Parkinson's? That's because it only inhibits this reaction outside the blood-brain barrier, which allows more dopa to be available in the brain for conversion to dopamine. So getting back to our pathway, dopamine is then converted to norepinephrine by the enzyme dopamine beta-hydroxylase, which requires vitamin C as a cofactor. In the final step, norepinephrine is converted to epinephrine by phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase. Since this reaction adds a methyl group to norepinephrine, it should not be surprising that SAM is used as a cofactor to donate that methyl group. This enzyme is regulated by cortisol, so when cortisol levels increase due to stress, more epinephrine will be produced. You may also want to keep in mind that both dopamine and norepinephrine are produced both in the central and peripheral nervous systems, but epinephrine is only produced in the adrenal glands. Catecholamines can be broken down by monoamine oxidase, or catechol o methyltransferase. Dopamine is broken down into homovanillic acid, norepinephrine is broken down into VMA, or vanillomandelic acid, and lastly, epinephrine is broken down into metanephrine. Now we'll go through some diseases that are caused by dysfunction of amino acid metabolism. Phenylketonuria, or PKU, is one of the most common enzyme deficiencies, with an incidence of 1 in 10,000. It can be caused by an autosomal recessive deficiency in phenylalanine hydroxylase or by a deficiency of the tetrahydrobiopterin cofactor. Both of these are required to convert phenylalanine to tyrosine, so a deficiency in either results in a buildup of phenylalanine and tyrosine deficiency. The excess phenylalanine will then be converted to phenyl ketones, such as phenylacetate, phenylactate, and phenylpyruvate. Tyrosine becomes an essential amino acid, and if it isn't consumed enough in the diet, the catecholamines can't be produced. Remember, phenylalanine is converted to tyrosine, which is then converted to the catecholamines. Also, without tyrosine, you can't produce thyroid hormones or melanin. Consequently, these patients will have mental retardation, growth retardation due to lack of thyroxine, seizures, fair skin due to lack of melanin, eczema, and a musty body odor. To remember this last connection, keep in mind that the phenyl group is an aromatic ring, so these patients will have a distinctive aroma. The treatment of PKU is to eat less phenylalanine and more tyrosine. Since artificial sweeteners such as aspartame and NutraSweet contain phenylalanine, patients with PKU should avoid these. PKU can also arise in a fetus if the mother does not have a sufficient dietary intake of her aromatic amino acids. Infants from these mothers have microcephaly, mental retardation, growth retardation, and congenital heart defects. You'll see these same defects if the mother has PKU and does not adhere to her dietary regimen. Since phenylalanine can cross the placenta, newborns are often screened for this two or three days after birth. Alcaptonuria, which is also called ochronosis, since it causes cartilage damage, is also a defect in amino acid metabolism. This time, the defect is in the enzyme homogentistic acid oxidase, which converts homogentistic acid to malleal acetoacetic acid. This enzyme deficiency impairs the degradation of tyrosine to fumarate and causes a relatively benign disease. The most characteristic finding is that the urine turns black on standing, which has given the disease the nickname of black urine disease. Other manifestations include dark connective tissue, 
Brown pigmented sclera and debilitating arthralgias since the buildup of homogentistic acid is toxic to cartilage. Albinism is a full or partial lack of pigment in the hair, eyes, and skin, as you can see in this picture. It can be caused by several different defects, since mutations at different loci all produce the same phenotype. Do you remember what that's called? That would be locus heterogeneity. It can be caused by an autosomal recessive defect in tyrosinase, which synthesizes melanin from tyrosine, or a defect in tyrosine transporters, which indirectly prevents melanin synthesis. Since the melanocytes that produce melanin are derived from neural crest cells, a lack of migration of neural crest cells can also cause albinism. Regardless of the cause, a lack of melanin can cause an increase in risk of skin cancer. A similar disease that does not exhibit locus heterogeneity is ocular albinism, in which only the eyes lack pigment, and this is X-linked recessive. Homocystinuria literally means an excess of homocysteine in the urine. This also exhibits locus heterogeneity, since there are many genetic causes that produce the same phenotype. It can be caused by cystothionine synthase deficiency, homocysteine methyltransferase deficiency, or a decrease in the affinity of cystothionine synthase for pyridoxal phosphate. Treatment depends on the cause. It might be easier to understand after looking at this figure. Cysteine is made from cystothionine, which in turn is made from homocysteine, with the help of cystothionine synthase and B6. Therefore, a cystothionine synthase deficiency would lead to decreased cysteine and increased methionine, since the excess homocysteine will be converted to methionine. This step will also consume lots of B12 and folate. Therefore, to treat cystothionine synthase deficiency, you should decrease methionine intake and increase the intake of cysteine, B12, and folate. In the second case, if cystothionine synthase has a decreased affinity for pyridoxal phosphate, which is B6, this is best treated by just increasing dietary intake of B6. In the last case, if homocysteine methyltransferase is deficient, cysteine again becomes an essential amino acid. Patients can present with mental retardation, osteoporosis, tall stature, kyphosis, lens subluxation, and atherosclerosis. Cystinuria is a rare autosomal recessive defect in proximal convoluted tubular reabsorption of the basic amino acids, which includes cysteine, ornithine, lysine, and arginine. This results in excretion of these four amino acids in the urine. To remember these amino acids, you can use the mnemonic cork. Since the symbols for these amino acids are C for cysteine, O for ornithine, R for arginine, and K for lysine. And if you have cystinuria, you can think of needing a cork to prevent these amino acids from flowing out of the kidneys. One of the most important effects of this disease is that cysteine can precipitate and form kidney stones, which are also called cysteine staghorn calculi. Keep in mind that this cysteine, spelled with just an I, is different from cysteine spelled with an IE. The cysteine with an IE is the amino acid, whereas just one I means it's a dimer of two amino acids, which are connected by a disulfide bond. Patients with cysteine kidney stones may have hexagonal shaped crystals on urinalysis. To treat cystinuria, patients can be given acetazolamide, which alkalinizes the urine. This is covered in more depth in the renal chapter. Maple syrup urine disease is another disease of amino acid metabolism in which the enzyme alpha-ketoacid dehydrogenase is deficient. This enzyme catalyzes the catabolism of branched amino acids, which include isoleucine, leucine, and valine. You can remember these with the mnemonic I love Vermont maple syrup for maple trees with branches. This deficiency causes an increase in alpha-keto acids in the blood, especially from leucine. Affected infants are normal at birth, but develop a characteristic maple syrup smell from the urine, and CNS defects such as lethargy, feeding difficulties, coma, and seizures. If untreated, this can cause mental retardation, or even death, in the first few months of life. The treatment is dietary restriction of all three branched-chain amino acids. Heart nut disease is an autosomal recessive disorder of neutral amino acid transporters on renal and intestinal epithelial cells. This leads to a malabsorption of tryptophan and decreased renal reabsorption of tryptophan. This means that patients will excrete tryptophan on their urine and not be able to absorb it from the gut. This in turn will cause B3 deficiency, since tryptophan is required to make B3, and consequently this causes pellagra, which is characterized by diarrhea, dermatitis, and dementia. You can see an example of the dermatitis part of pellagra here. Heart nut disease is best treated by administering tryptophan.